I think a lot. Sometimes a little too much. Maybe blue? Green. Nah, orange. Ah. I've always been fascinated with color. I think there can be so many different color palettes in one scene. So many possibilities. So many different ways of viewing the world. When you start to understand color, you also learn how to set a mood for the scene. You learn how color can influence and set a certain tone for the viewer. Bright pastel colors could be interpreted as happy, while darker and moody tones could set a sad or airy mood. Of course, these are only general ways of actually using these colors as there is much more ways of utilizing it. I've been shooting with the Picture Profile HLG2 on my Sony a7 III for a while now and when it comes to actually exposing and grading it, it's actually quite simple. So in today's video, I wanted to cover how I expose and color grade my HLG2 footage. So first off, why HLG2, why not S-Log or any other picture profile? So with S-Log, there's a couple of reasons why I've actually shifted away from it. You know, one is because of our 8-bit sensors on our Sony cameras. S-Log stretches the gamma way too far for our 8-bit sensors to actually handle. If you look very closely on the sides and edges of most S-Log footage, you actually notice the little artifacts and color noise. Second is that S-Log does not do well in low light. Just take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison. This is the exact same scene with the exact same settings shot in S-Log 2, HLG 2, and also HLG 3. And taking a look at S-Log 2 versus the other two, you can already tell there's much more noise and you can already see color distortion. I've had a lot of comments and people tell me that S-Log 2 does really well in low light, but personally, I just don't really see that at all. Another thing that I do want to note is that if you are using S-Log respectively, you should keep it at its native ISO in order to utilize its dynamic range. If you start bumping up your native ISO, which is 800 to up to 3200 or 5000, you actually start losing dynamic range. And that kind of defeats the entire purpose of using S-Log in the first place, right? Because we're trying to get more dynamic range, which kind of ties back into why it's not good in low light. You can't really bump up the ISO unless you know you want to sacrifice dynamic range. Don't get me wrong though, when used in the right situation and scenario, and if you expose it correctly, S-Log 2 can be a pretty impressive picture profile. It's not as forgiving and lenient versus some of the other picture profiles. I think the only time I would ever use S-Log is during a very harsh and bright day where there isn't a lot of shadows and mainly just highlights to work with. And maybe in the future I'll make a more in-depth video about S-Log, but for now, uh, let's jump back into HLG2. So a quick summary as to why I use HLG2 is that one, it performs well in low light. Native ISO is at 125. It looks really good straight out the camera. The main reason I would say is that it's the most versatile, you know, in almost any lighting situation, HLG2 performs well. So now that you know why I use HLG2, let's start off with exposing for it. The most important thing about getting good color is getting a good exposure first. Every well color graded video starts off with good exposure. First, I like to start off with white balance. I like to nail my white balance first. And when I do have time, I normally like to use a white piece of paper or something gray to actually white balance too. This could be a piece of paper, a cup or a chair, a white wall, just about anything. By doing this, it helps me ensure a very consistent white balance for the rest of my shots so that later in post, it will make it much more easier to correct. But in the instance that I don't have enough time to white balance, I actually leave my white balance set to auto. And on the a7 III, it does a pretty good job at auto white balancing. There are some errors from time to time and white balance does shift, but for the purpose of speed, it actually works pretty well. Now, when it comes to exposure, I like to keep an eye on my exposure meter when I'm exposing for HLG2. I normally keep this number around zero to plus one, depending on my lighting situation or particular scenario. It's always gonna be a little bit different depending on what you're shooting, but for the most part, if you keep it around zero to plus one, you should be fine. Next, quickly talking about my HLG2 profile, um, I actually don't change too much in it, but I do use the color mode 709 and the only thing that I change inside my settings and my picture profile is detail. I dropped that down to minus seven because in-camera sharpening is pretty bad and it's always best recommended to do sharpening in post. And also I kind of really like the softer images. I think overly sharpened footage looks way too digital and just a little bit too, I don't know, too perfect, I guess. I kind of like that soft look, so that's my preference. All right, so now moving into the post-processing color correction and color grading. Um, I've actually already lined up a couple clips inside here, inside Premiere Pro, that's actually all shots in HLG2. 
And I kind of walk you through the steps of how I like to correct and then grade this footage. And to be honest, for the most part, I actually do use my custom LUTs to grade all this and kind of work from there. But I also want to mention that LUTs aren't always going to work for your clips and sometimes it doesn't really look like the way you want it to turn out. Sometimes your white balance or exposure might be off and LUTs aren't going to save you from that. You're going to need to kind of customly adjust it yourself and correct it and fix it. So let me show you guys how I correct after applying a LUT or even before applying a LUT. Alright, so as you can see, I have five different clips inside here, which I will be kind of using as an example. Starting off with this first clip right here, this is actually a clip from Glacier National Park that I shot in 4K HLG2. And it was during midday, so lighting is pretty harsh, uh, blue skies, not too many shadows, but I'm going to see what I can do to work with it. So the first thing I like to have open when I'm color grading are these two vector scopes right here. And I won't go into deep detail as to what they are, but they kind of show me an accurate re representation of what the colors are inside. So first I should start off with creating an adjustment layer. Uh, go, go down into this little icon right here, new item, and select adjustment layer. Click OK. Drag this on top. I'm going to drag this for the length of all these clips and kind of just cut them all for each individual clip because I know some clips are going to be a little bit different from the others. Alright, so now that I have this adjustment layer on top, I'm actually going to do all of my color grading effects inside this layer. So that way it kind of keeps things organized and if I ever wanted to kind of bulk edit, I could just use this and drag it on top for the other clips. So starting off, I kind of work a little bit backwards. Um, this might be not the best route to go, but I do like to use my LUTs first. So I'll actually input this first. Go into browse and I actually will use sunset look. I think sunset look might warm it up a little bit and uh, give it a flatter look. So I'm just gonna use this. Okay, already it's looking pretty darn cool. Um, I feel like I can push the contrast levels a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside basic corrections and kind of fiddle with it until I'm happy with it. So uh, maybe I'll just bump up the contrast a bit. I'm gonna raise the highlights highlights just a little don't want to clip it though and this is where these vectors over here is showing me so I'm not clipping which is good and then maybe raise drop the shadows just a bit and looking on the vectors it does look like there's a lot more red than there is blue maybe I'll just slightly adjust temperature lower a little bit lower it a little bluer and next I'll actually go inside curves and I'll actually try to change and add some tones in there so I actually add a point on this intersecting line right here and also right here to try to create a S curve and I actually just grab this bottom dot and just raise it up a bit and as you can see it kind of lifts up the shadows but in a very kind of unique way it gives it this slight fade to it so I don't want to overdo it I think right there is okay and then I'll kind of just fiddle with this as well I'll kind of this helps drop the shadows a bit while keeping that slight fade in there and I'll kind of play with this as well really bring out the contrast with that raise that up just a bit still not clipping anything which is good um, all right, and so far it's looking pretty good. Uh, one thing that I do notice about Sony footage is that the blues are very saturated. Um, I don't really like how much saturation is in the blues. So what I'm gonna do is actually go into HSL secondary, select blue and uh, kind of a, make sure to adjust it. And I'll use these three sliders to kind of uh, mask out the blue I don't want to affect too much now next thing I'll do is denoise and feather it blur it kind of helps smoothen out that and now I'll just drop the saturation down a little bit cool now that's looking a lot better in my opinion. Here's the before and after. 
Looks really good. I like it. Hmm. All right, so for that particular shot, you know, even with the LUTs, I had to do a lot of correction and kind of a little bit more oomph to it. Next clip, I have this very darker, moody, misty shot that I shot in the forest. Now, first thing I'll do, I'll uh, import one of these LUTs I've created. Uh, Crocodile might be a good bet. Kind of gives off a very greenish, darker tone. I really like the greens and the shadows. Let's see what else we can do. We can do Gator, maybe. Now, Gator actually gives it a much more neutral look, less stylistic, uh, less greens, but still very moody tones, as you can see in the shadow. It looks like I've lifted up the, the shadows in the S-curve. And I think we'll kind of start from there. Gator looks really good already, so I mean, I don't even know what I would add to this. Maybe I'll just brighten up the highlights a little bit. I could actually raise up the highlights a little bit if I wanted to give you know a little more light to it, but I think that darkness does create this airy, spooky vibe that's already kind of given with this clip. That looks kind of, you know, if, if I was going for that vibe, this spooky Halloween type of vibe, I could, you know, leave it darker, but I could maybe just brighten it up a little bit and, you know, probably about it. Could drop temperature blur, kind of creates a little bit of blue in there. And I feel like that looks pretty good already. I mean, I'll show you guys before and after before and here is the after pretty big difference all right so in this next clip i just have you know a basic clip of me inside uh the office just a normal average headshot and this is shot in hlg and already off the bat it looks pretty good like i like i feel like i could even use this as final edits but you know i kind of want to shift the tones a little bit change my skin tone and Okay, maybe give it like a little more stylized look to it. So I like to actually use cold for these type of headshots. Uh, I find that it kind of gives off a really good skin tone, at least for me. Um, so I'll just import this. And already it's much more bluer. My skin tone is a little bit more orange. And there's really not too much I would change, I guess. Like, I mean, I think it's a little bit too blue. So I'll actually lower the intensity a bit. Kind of find a good sweet spot right here lift up the mid-tones with highlights kind of bring that kind of make it a little even bring up the whites I do think maybe my skin tone is a little bit too yellowish so what I do is I actually go inside curves and I actually go into Hewer's hue lift this up ever so slightly and it kind of gives me slightly more reddish tones in my skin and that's basically the gist of it that's basically the, what i do for these certain headshots and i'll show you guys the before and after kind of brought a little bit more highlights a little bit more contrast and a little more oomph and stylized it a little bit more moving into this really awesome desert shots um looking at the vector scopes it looks like i'm clipping and that's probably just the sun right there um, colors look all even. It looks like the auto white balance did do a very awesome job. For the most part, I think a lot of these shots are actually auto white balance and it, it actually does pretty good. Let's go for desert heat and already that's looking pretty darn good. The vector scope looks pretty good. It looks more on the reddish sides, which is what I want. I want to give off more redder tone to kind of give off a sense of heat. I could actually raise up the temperature a little bit to give off a more fiery hot desert look which that looks pretty good i would say that that could pass okay um now you know i think it looks a little too saturated right here so you know what i'm just gonna lower the saturation a little bit just a little bit there you go say right there is pretty good um, i'll show you guys before and after so here's before here is the after Pretty significant difference. Uh, I've definitely shifted the tones over to a much warmer, hotter look. Um, I think that kind of suits the desert vibes anyways. All right, so now moving on to the last shots. Uh, it's a clip that I got out at Joshua Tree when I was shooting for a wedding. Um, I would say it's already looking at the vector scopes. It looks like it's a little more reddish. It looks a little more warmer and greener than it is cooler. Um, the, the tones are more shifted over to yellow and red. What I could do is actually just try to bring these tones back into the middle. So let's actually shift this over to blue. Kind of just even it out right there. Looks about even. 
and then ever so slightly, you know, it's very, very slight, minute. Right there looks kind of good, right there. It looks pretty neutral, kind of a good starting point. And I feel like this clip could almost even go off without even using a LUT, but I'll kind of just see what it can do. I'll use Daylight 02. Daylight 02 kind of, yeah, gave it a little bit more color to the greens, a little more saturation right there. Let's see what I do with the S-curve. I'm gonna add an S-curve over here. Color's looking good. Let me see how I can change the tones a bit. I'm gonna add bit of a lift from the bottom. Don't want to make it too dark. Kind of want it to be more lighter look because this is I want it to be like happy, happy tones, you know. And I'll lift up the highlights a little bit to give a little bit more contrast. I'll show you guys before and after. It's very slight, but it did give it a little bit more taste to it, I think. I also want to mention that it's also your job as the cameraman to get a well-composed image. You know, if it's already a really bad clip to begin with, by color grading it or, you know, adding a LUT, it's not going to magically save it. You know, it really comes down to how well you shot it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I kind of wanted to highlight that, you know, LUTs aren't going to work for every single clip that you have. Sometimes it will, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and when it doesn't, you're going to need to know how to kind of correct it and get it to a point where it does look good and be able to match your other clips. So don't rely so heavily on LUTs, but they are very useful for kind of speeding up the color grading process and sometimes achieving tones that you aren't even able to get. Do not forget to also follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more exclusive content. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your time and attention once again. And uh, I think that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.